Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about how we can start to customize a little uh, window for how we're drawing our individual abilities to the inspector. You can see, like, maybe I want to add little graphics here. Maybe you want to shift these around, put them on the same line. Most of this video is going to be getting set up and kind of creating the, the little framework for maybe even doing a, a drop down, for example. We're going to override all that stuff and we're going to build it back and uh, get all set up. And then later on, we'll we'll go over this part, probably in a different video. But there are a couple things to that we have to get through before we can even get to this point, which is kind of weird. Well, let's get started. First of all, we need to create our property drawer, which will be our script that looks at our monster ability, pulls its information, and decides how it's going to draw it to the inspector window. And we need to actually do a few things, right? Because if we just draw an ability, it's gonna to try to put it all in one line. We don't really get this drop down by default either because we're gonna overwrite it and, and create our own. So most of what we're gonna to do today is figure out how we can create our own little drop drop down menu right here and start to set up our property drawer so that we can then add this information later. So to do that, we are going to create another script here uh, inside, inside of an editor folder because this is an editor script. We're gonna call this monster ability drawer. Sorry, you're probably gonna hear the little Roomba robot in the background. It's not a Roomba, it's whatever the off brand is. Okay, we're gonna open up our monster ability drawer. Remember this is inside of an editor folder. That is very important. The very top, we're gonna say using unity editor. Okay, this is not a mono behavior. This particular script is going to inherit from property drawer. Remember we use our decorator drawer before, which gives us, it allows us to access some really helpful information. Property drawer gives us other types of information. Uh, and we'll talk about how we can use that later. So like, you know, we get the position of where we are in the inspector window and stuff like that. So we're gonna get out of there. Okay, our monster ability drawer that inherits from property drawer. Now we need to tell it what class to look at that we want to draw, right? Our monster ability is what we wanna tie to this, this drawer. So to do that, we're gonna add our little brackets here. We're gonna say custom, just like we've been doing with all the other ones, we'll say custom property drawer of type, well, type of monster ability. I mean, this is just syntax and you just have to remember, like I always look this stuff up. Don't think you have to have this perfectly memorized unless you're just dealing with this stuff all the time. Uh, you will probably have to just look back at old scripts or look stuff up, that's perfectly normal. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. We're just gonna set ourselves up. Um, we're going to use our serialized properties so that we get some uh, built-in editor functionality like undo and, and highlighting and stuff like that through this property. So then we just have to look back at all our ability uh, uh, data that we defined over here. So we have a name, damage, and an element. So this will be name, serialized, pro serialized property, damage, and element, All right? And then our element is our our little enum that we defined over here. Okay, and this is just the start of that. Um, we're kind of just setting ourselves up to begin drawing this stuff. Um, we still need to create the little drop down and all that other uh, fun stuff too. Okay, uh, the first thing to know, um, there are two major methods that you will be overriding. Like there's probably a few more, but the, the two important ones that you need to know about are on GUI and the other one I believe is called get property height. Yeah, get property height. We'll start off with public override on GUI. And you see it's gonna pass us uh, some parameters here. It's actually very useful because we can use these parameters. Uh, we can just take them in and use those to begin drawing things. Like if we know the, the position of the start point of our property, right? Like the position inside of the, uh, let me come back here. So inside of our data, uh, if we know the you're already going to see it's going to look kind of weird right we're overriding it but we haven't drawn anything uh, if we get the position back of where we can start drawing we can use this to determine exactly what we want to do and we can use it to draw that's helpful uh, we get some other stuff to uh, label like you know we can do some stuff here and you know position and our property the property is just the the ability you know so we can pull in our monster ability and do some stuff with that we get some parameters this time, which is pretty useful, but we have to do more custom stuff. So it's kind of like, even though that is useful, we have to do more with it, do more of our own calculations. So it's, you know, kind of balances out. It's kind of annoying. Okay, so this is our first part. 
we'll we'll get we'll come back to this in a second. This is our drawing instructions, like how to draw to the inspector window. And then the other major method that we're going to have to override to do anything with this stuff is get property height. Uh, it actually returns a float, right? Like this is very similar to our decorator drawer. You're going to see this pop up here. If you remember our uh, decorator drawer where we had to actually declare that we needed more space to draw, we had to like say, give me more vertical space. So otherwise our windows would clash with each other. That's what this is doing. It's just a little more complicated because we get more parameters and we have to, you know, like if we want to expand this arrow, we actually have to say when the arrow is expanded, give us more space. And when it's not, put it in one line. Uh, so we need to all control all that stuff, you know, by hand, well, figuratively, but we can override this to request more vertical spacing. We just have to return it, right? So if we want more vert vertical space, this will by default just return a single line, which is what we're using right here. But if we want multiple lines, we actually have to return how many pixels we need, and then it will shift everything downwards, at, right? Like if we had multiple abilities here, this is going to look very terrible. But uh, if we had multiple abilities and we expanded the arrow, we want everything below it to shift down too, right? So that's why we need this. So these two methods right here will uh, help us get set up. Okay, so I think the first thing is let's start with get property height just to get this out of the way so we can see our uh, drop down working. So what we can do here is I'm just going to leave ourselves some space. Let's conceptually think about this in terms of lines. So if we know that we only want to draw one line, then we just need to figure out the pixel height of one line. And one way that we can do that uh, is in a little, let's see, line height or something. It's equal to editor GUI layout dot single line height. Oh, sorry. Uh, editor GUI utility is what I'm looking for. Okay. Here. So I just want to show you this. I'm probably going to delete this, but um, this right here gives us the height of a single line. Like maybe you could just change this in one place and your, all your code would update uh, appropriately. But for now, we're just going to get the current line height from the, uh, from the inspector window. And then what we're going to do is we're going to declare how many lines we need instead of trying to come up with some arbitrary like 200 pixels or whatever we're just going to figure it out in regards to lines so if we can get the height of one line which i told you i was going to delete this i'm going to pull this down we just need to determine how many lines we need for our property and if we take that number of lines and multiply it by a single line height that will give us a total space so for example if our line height was 10 pixels and we needed three lines, we'd say, give me 10 times three, give me 30 pixels of space. And then we'd return that. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, how many lines do we need? We need int, uh, we'll just say total lines. We'll start off with one. And so then we'll return editor GUI utility. We'll just return this right here. I'll just copy paste it. <coughs> Uh, times total lines. All right. So basically right here, if we only have one line, one times our single line height will be our, you know, just one line's worth of our height. Uh, if we had mul if we had multiple lines, so let's say we had two lines, then we'd return two. So let's have a look at that. Let's save that. You see now, like we get, we're just saying we want two lines, but we're still not doing anything with the dropdown. We're just saying, give me two lines, or if we wanted one, we could give one. Uh, remember, this is just getting called by the engine. It is saying, it is asking, like, hey, how many, how much height do you need? And I'm just telling it how much I need. So we can control that here. Now, if we want our drop down to work, uh, increase our height if we expand drop down, or this uh, we'll call this uh, expand arrow or fold out or whatever. Uh, what we can do is we can take in our property here and we can set, which is our uh, ability, right? Our monster ability. And we can say, if property dot is expanded, oh, right? This just lets us know if, if our arrow has been clicked. If we have, then we want to keep, we want to keep our initial line, right? Like our label and then add more lines underneath it. Now at this point, we need to figure out how many lines we really want. You know, if we want three lines, we could say add three lines, right? So while our property is expanded, add three lines to it. If it's not expanded, just add one. 
uh, is what we're doing here. And whichever path this takes, like if we have one or if we have four, then at the end of it, just return it back um, single line. So if we don't have it expanded, it'll be one. And if we do have it expanded, it should be four. Alrighty, let's come back here, see what happens. Okay, look at that. So we still need to add more content here, right? But um, so far we can actually expand our foldouts. Uh, we need this to look a little cleaner though, right? And then we need to add our, um, our properties in there. Let's, let's clean this up just a little bit. Okay, um, so we're gonna come back into our script. We're just gonna set ourselves up real early here. Uh, the first thing we should do is just so that we get some editor functionality, I'm gonna do something called uh, begin property. And we're just gonna pass in our you know parameters up here. So position, property, and label. Oh, nope, it's different. Uh, label and property. That's annoying. Okay, uh, so we're gonna do that. And then we're going to have all of our drawing instructions here. Then we're also going to close it out. And property. All right, okay, let's save that. See what happens now. Like a, a lot of this is just going back and checking. And you'll see that now that we're beginning, we need to actually now draw the foldout window as well, right? I mean, we need to do this from scratch. It, it's not fun, uh, but you know that is just working with property drawers. Okay, so we actually need to create the foldout menu that when we click it, we'll flag this as uh, is expanded. So we can do that here. Okay, uh, now we're just going to finish the foldout box over here. Uh, this is gonna be kind of weird because like I said, we have to specifically define our rectangles. We're going to make a rectangle. We're going to, uh, of, of a fold out type, and then we're going to draw it. And then when it's folded out, then we'll look at that, uh, for, uh, expanding or not. So let's just do that here just to see what this looks like. We'll call this, this rectangle is going to be our, uh, fold out box. It's equal to any rect. Okay, so we get our position of where we want to draw it here, right? So uh, start at the very top, position.x, min, uh, maybe this is different, hold on, min.x, position.min.y. Uh, basically, we want it to start in the very top left is what we're saying here. So zero, zero, right? Remember how we draw our rectangles? This is zero, zero, and then this is the full width, this is the full height, so, you know, if we want to go 20, all right, this is 20. If we want to go 50, this is 50. This would be zero, zero, which is where we want to start our rectangle. And then uh, we can also do for our width and our height. So this is position X, position Y. Uh, this is our width. And if we say position dot width, we can get the width of the window. Nope, nope, nope. So it's position dot size. X and in terms of uh, vertical, like how how big do we want this initial uh, foldout box to be? We want it to be one line, right? We we want it to be one line, and then we fold it out. Like we'll put our label here. We fold it out, and then we want to expand it. And then uh, finally, our one line, single line height. Uh, oh, I keep putting editor GUI layout. It's GUI utility muscle memory. <clears throat> there we go. Oh, we need our comma here. Okay. Right. So if we want our size, uh, Y, but you know, right now we need the current width of the window. We'll do our, our vertical height by line. Like how many lines do we need? So this is our potential rectangle that we have not drawn yet. So we need to draw it. Dot. So this is our fold out menu and we need to give it our rectangle. So this is our, this is what gives us the fold out functionality. Uh, or the, the graphic that draws for a fold out that we would expect. Uh, let's undo that. So I want to copy this uh, rectangle that we calculated. So this is our rectangle. If we hover over, you can see it needs a rectangle, uh, a Boolean. And you'll also see that it returns a Boolean, which is whether or not it's folded out. Uh, we'll just pass in, right? Because it needs to know whether it needs to draw the folded out version or the non-folded out version. Let's say we don't know. We'll just say, is the property property dot is expanded. 
Uh, then we'll give it a label. Um, the, our label is just going to be what our property is called. So our monster ability, it'll be whatever the label that gets passed in is. Uh, I believe if we give it a name, it might even change that. I honestly can't remember. Um, but however, the Unity editor is figuring out what label to put here, you know, it'll use that. So we'll just pass that in right there. And remember, this actually returns a Boolean, right? So uh, let's actually assign that. So if we click it, property dot is expanded, then we want to store that and say, if we click the arrow, yes, it's now expanded. If we click it again, it is no longer expanded. We, when we use our fold out uh, object here, we are receiving that click and then storing the Boolean for whether or not that's expanded and passing that in. Uh, and this is just the current state of whether or not it's, it's expanded. It's kind of weird. It's like circular to think about, but uh, there we go. Okay, save. Oh, we got our window and we got our expansion, right? We overrode it and we created our own, which is cool, but you know we can't really do anything with it yet. Uh, but again, if we're choosing to redraw it ourselves, we now have full control over it, which is kind of nice. When we're expanded, we're using this value down here. So if we only wanted to add two more lines, we'll change that value, All right? It's a little smaller. And you could pull some of the stuff up here if you want to, to clean it up. You know, that, that's fine. I'm trying to be very explicit so you can just see what's happening without having to look a billion different places. But hopefully this, this starts to make sense. We're making our fold out menu, but once we do this, then we can draw our properties, right? Now that we have our little fold out, we can draw our information, which is our, you know, name, damage, type, and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, property drawers are a little complicated, but uh, we'll, we'll keep working through it as we go.